the inspiration for Into the Grey is kind of complicated, actually. It started off as a visual image, really, which I had kept in my head from possibly from when I was about seven. You know, it's been in my head that long and it was based in the, the house in Scaries is a real place that's in Into the Grey. And um, the bunk beds were real and the, the, the scene where we, you would lie on those bunk beds at night and the lights from the road would flash off the mirror of the dressing table and it would light up the room occasionally. And I always used to think to myself, what's going to happen if next time that light flashes and there's someone in the bunk above me? And it used to freak me out. And I've kind of kept, kept that with me, uh, just as an image from, from that time. And I, when I sat down to write Into the Grey, I, I kind of knew that was going to com come into it. But, but in writing Into the Grey, see, I always write about ghosts, there's werewolves, you know, there's immortal pirates, there's all these fantasy all these fantasy elements in my work. So in Into the Grey, it's the, the fantasy element is the whole idea of the ghost and, and possession of another human being. But while I'm writing about, the reasons I'm writing about with those things is because it's much, much easier to come at the hard realities of what I'm trying to explore. The things I'm trying to explore in my books are always unavoidably dark. And I think it's so much easier and actually a lot more fun to explore those things through a fantasy element because while you're busy having fun with the fantasy stuff, the real life stuff is going on in the back of your head. But you know, you, you know it's happening, but you're also having an enormous kind of thrill ride at the same time. And when I sat down to write Into the Grey, the things I was writing about is, it was only when I grew up that I became aware of the dual histories that were in my family. Um, one side of which had been part of the British Army and had fought in, the, in both world wars and had been in the RAF and had had this very, very uh, noble and heroic uh, a aspect to them. The other side of which it was literally sp split along maternal and paternal lines. So my mother's family were very much British Army. Uh, my father's family were very much old IRA, fought in the War of Independence, very, very involved in, in you know, the, the independence of this, this country. And so, of course, I had heard stories of these men and women all my life, the people who had fought for our independence. And they were the people that I was grown up, that I grew up knowing about and talking about constantly. And it was only uh, as a much older person that I realised there was this other side of the, the story, literally opposing forces of the story, both of whom considered themselves Irish, both of whom at some stage in their history were told that they were killing and dying for a noble cause but both of whom also at some stage in their history were also told, no, what you did was wrong. Because the guys who of course had fought for the British in World War I would have been considered traitors to the guys who were fighting for our independence. And then much later, the guys who were fighting for our independence would have, the, the people who continued that fight past what was considered noble or, or worthy, would also have been considered traitors to the country. And it's such, it was such a mess. It was such a mess of, of, uh, of acceptance and, and being told who was right and who was wrong. And I, I kind of thought to myself, how as a person who has gone through both those histories, looking back down through the decisions you made in your life and all the different versions of you that all the different stories that history is telling about you, that you've, these things you've lived personally, how do you even recognise yourself looking back at the history we're taught in this country? How do you even know 
that oh how do you even tell yourself yes I was part of that story because it's so mixed up it changed so constantly and that that kind of got mixed up with this whole idea you know the opposing sides of one brother looking at the other and not recognizing his face not recognizing you know who that person was because they were divided by this history and even taking it further looking in the mirror and not recognizing who you are because you no longer recognize the stories that are being told about you and I just it just that that was it I just wanted to explore that without ever saying this is right this is wrong just explore it